Welcome to the show. I'm Jason Whitlock, and I'll tell you why Dak Prescott just proved he doesn't need Ezekiel Elliott. And I'm Colin Coward, and I'll tell you why the NBA would be crazy to punish Magic Johnson for tampering. Speak for yourself on a Monday starts right now. Oh, Magic's above the law, huh? Well, celebrities, you know, increasingly <laughs> are. LA's most wanted. All right, hello and welcome. We're joined today by a couple of Super Bowl champs, Seth Joyner and Eric Davis. Let's start in the NFL, where reportedly the owners are finalizing a five-year extension for Roger Goodell, despite the commissioners presiding over numerous controversies during his tenure, from Ray Rice to the Flategate to this year's suspension of Ezekiel Elliott. Coward, are you surprised Goodell is getting an extension? No, because the media uh, doesn't like power, and the NFL is powerful, and so they always take shots at Roger Goodell. But it's the old Ronald Reagan line, are you better off than you were four years ago? Ratings, relocation, revenue, and they just signed a couple years ago a 10-year CBA that is viewed as overwhelmingly in favor of the owners. Owners right now are real happy. <laughs> Owners pay Roger Goodell. Not shocked at all. I am surprised because I have to admit, I got caught up in the Twitter, social media, hailstorm of Roger Goodell criticism over the last three or four years, and I thought he was on shaky ground. And so I, I, I'm surprised, but now I'm kind of on the other side. of Like, I got caught up in a BS, fake narrative or false narrative, and Roger Goodell must clearly be doing a better job than what he's getting credit for, and ownership's happy. You know, I, I agree with Colin because, you know, when you look at the economical situation of the NFL, it's never, it's, it's never better than what, it's been, what it is right now. Right. Um, and Roger Goodell has a lot to do with that. He is running this organization exactly the way that the 32 owners want him exactly. to, to run it. They're making money. Viewership is up. Regardless of, year, regardless of what happened last year, I think last year had a lot to do with the election more than anything else, but viewership is up, and it's just the, it's the big machine, like I said last week, that's just not going anywhere. And just as long as he's producing the way that the 32 owners want him to produce, they don't care what, the, what everybody else thinks. Yeah, not surprised at all. Uh, two reasons. Reason number one, you have a major bargaining piece that will be talked about when the negotiation comes up with the players here. You have that lockdown okay so the players are going to come in uh, the players association are going to want to take some of that power from roger they're going to want to discuss all of those things so what are you willing to step away from to get that so i think that's part of the reason why owners want him there and then the other aspect when you said the 32 owners are happy with everything he's done no 30 of them are um, the Patriots aren't happy with everything jerry jones is not happy right now about everything but if you are those other 30 you are happy that this man is willing to step out yeah. onto the big two. So I think that's part of the reason as well, because it's not because but all of these guys are saying he's helping all of us, and even in the fights against the big boys, he's helping. As it as it applies to their players that he that he's put under suspension, I get that. But from an economical standpoint, oh no, they're and, all and, 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 and the and, and the, the the good place that the NFL is in, they're all loving him right now. Listen, most commissioners in my lifetime, Bowie Kuhn struggled with Charlie Finley, and Pete Rozelle struggled with Al Davis, and David Stern struggled with uh, uh, Donald Sterling, and more playfully, Mark Cuban. Cuban. The reality is, is these are billionaires, and they get their way all the time. But billionaires are loyal mostly to dollar signs, and this league mm -hmm. is humming with streaming money now coming in. I, I don't want to sound contradictory, because I've always said, man, I think we're a little too hard on Roger Goodell. But, but there's also a part of me that sometimes thinks he gets too much credit for, hey, the economics of the NFL are great. Look, man, I, I don't know if you have to be a rocket scientist running the NFL at this particular moment in time. Pete Rozelle established some things with the NFL and television that have been put in place and everybody, from Paul Tagliabue to Roger Goodell, to me, has been living off of decisions that were made long ago. There's a lot of businesses. Your former employer and my former employer. I've seen a lot of people beat their chest. Oh, look what a great executive I am. And I'm like, no, no. The guy Rasmussen, who started this, <laughs> he invented something that anybody could run at this point and make a profit. You have to almost be an idiot to screw it up. And so I, I look at 
the NFL, and, I, and I'm just concerned in terms of how easy it is. I don't think his contract runs out till okay. 2019. They're already giving him an extension. I just don't know if they've been aggressive enough in defending football. That's where I question. But you're, you're looking through the prism of all-time ranking him. I'm not saying no. he's the. I'm not saying he's the best football commissioner, but I'm saying is he worthy of an extension? Again, most guys won't be Woody Hayes. But Jim Trestle was worthy of extensions until the NCAA stepped in. Keep in mind, this is two years out. They're rewarding him for, obviously, in my, in my view, good behavior. They could have waited another year and let some things play out. The issue that I think is just hovering over the NFL, I just don't think they're aggressive enough in defending football. And we may look back, if this what I believe a war on football and trying to scare kids and scare families away from football, we may look back, and that may be Goodell and the NFL's legacy. Were they aggressive enough in defending this sport, and did it eventually get undermined and lose its footing as America's when things, pastime? When things, when, when things are good, people always give credit to the people who are in, in power, okay? I mean, you, you, look at, you look at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You know, Tony Dungy built that team. Um, uh, Gruden came, in, Gr and Gr Gruden Gruden came yeah. in and won a Super Bowl. So who got all the credit? I Gruden okay. had the best-selling book. Well, well, I, well, I still... and, and, and at the end of the day, Goodell may be taking over a machine that's on autopilot, but he's the one that's in charge. So he's going to get the credit. We're missing quickly. It. Okay, quickly, the biggest point, I still think we're missing it. DeMar Smith comes out and says there's no way I don't see us as a league going to players going on strike. Okay, he says that, and then right after that, the owners come in and say, guess what? We're going to extend this guy. You still got to do it. <laughs> Hi guys, Colin Coward here. Before we get back to the Speak for Yourself podcast, I want to tell you about Toyo Tires. On Speak for Yourself, we're always talking about UFC star Conor McGregor. There's no denying his toughness, and there's no denying the toughness of Toyo Tires. That's why Toyo's been a proud sponsor of the UFC. Just like UFC fighters, Toyo Tires are built for battle. All or nothing philosophy, durability, aggressive design, on and off-road capabilities, Toyo Tires has it all. No matter what you drive, Toyo's got you covered. Also, a cool, slick look. Any vehicle or terrain, Toyo Tires. Tires are one of those things you can't sacrifice quality on. Toilet paper, quarterbacks, and tires don't go cheap. So the next time you need tires, ask for Toyo. T-O-I-O. -O. To experience more, visit toyotires.com backslash UFC, that's toyotires.com backslash UFC. To Dallas, where the Cowboys didn't seem to miss Ezekiel Elliott in Saturday's preseason matchup with the small Colts. Dak Prescott was nearly perfect. Just one incompletion in his first action of the year, capping the opening drive of the long touchdown to Des Bryant. Whitlock, do you believe Dak will be able to carry the Cowboys offense for a while without Zeke? Yes, I think that Dak and Dez are going to step out these first six games and try to put on a show. And I think they'll be successful. That doesn't, that's not talking about wins and losses. That's talking about what this offense is going to do with this offensive line, with this quarterback going into his second year, and with the wide receiver that I think I've heard people on this panel say isn't top five anymore. Dez Bryant is going to show everybody he's still one of the two or three best wide receivers in the league. So, yeah, I expect Dak and Dez to excel and carry this offense for a short time. Listen, a, a grocery store is better with a bakery, but it can survive without one. It needs produce and meats. This cowboy is about the O-line and the quarterback. I like the running back. But, again, the grocery store, the bakery smells better. Lo how much can you make on scones? I love running backs, but the Patriots have had a revolving door here, mm. but it's Brady, they have good old lines, a good coach. Zeke makes them better, they can win a lot of games without him. I think that uh, Dak is the real thick deal, and uh, 13 games, no, uh, but do I think they're going to be competitive and Dak will be able to get things done? Yes, I do. I'm with you. Dez, I still wouldn't put him top five, but <laughs> Dez is going to come out and debo some guys like he was doing that last game. I think that he's going to be on a mission to do that. His quarterback can get him the ball, and it, this offensive line makes running backs like they used to be in Denver. It didn't matter who you put back there. 
Some guys may be a little more special than others, but you were going to get 1,000 yards out of that position. I think that's what the offensive line of Dallas can, can produce. I, I think if you say that, then you minimize what, what Zeke Elliott meant to this offense. No, I said you some know, guys are more talented you know, than others. I, I, I get that, but I don't think that Alfred Morris and, and, and Darren McFadden are as talented as, as Ezekiel Elliott. And I think that, you know, I'm not saying that Dak can't be as good as he was last year, but this is a we'll come, we'll see now how yeah. good how good he really is okay because i'm of the belief i'm i'm still old school when it comes to football i think that a running game is a quarterback's best friend and when you can run the ball as effectively as they ran it last year then that just makes the quarterback's job that much easier now if these guys if these two guys can't give them the production that Zeke gave them, gave them last year, and he's got to carry this team on his shoulders. Now we're going to find out how good of a quarterback he really is. Yeah, we because, are. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, now you've got one less weapon to worry about. So now if I can take away, if I can take away Des Bryant and make him operate with the other guys, Seth, now we'll find out how Seth, good he's Seth, really going to be. Do you not remember how good you were and how your play elevated? after you had done a lap around the NFL. Absolutely. Yes, come, yes so exactly. Dak That's Prescott did it all last year. With, everything was the first time I saw it. Oh, we're playing the same team again, and they now have a book on me. He's seen it all now. I'm expecting Dak to step up. Yeah, they're going to take a step back in the running game. But I'd rather have a quarterback that's taking a step up than a running game that's taking a to, step to back. Your, to your point, as good as Dak was last year, he was only, they were only 23rd in passing. He's yeah. going to be better this like, year. Significantly yes. <laughs> better. Listen, I'm not saying that he can't do it, okay? I'm, what, what, it. I'm, what I'm saying is I want to see it because most players that come into the league, they're under a three-year umbrella, okay? They're, they're going to improve over a three-year span. And if they play for three years without injury, barring injury, then you know what? You know you have something. If they don't improve over that three-year span, barring injury and not playing a lot, then you know what they're going to be. So now, he had a great year last year. He might elevate this year. I'm not saying that he won't, but he's still within that three-year window of development, and he can just as easily take step, steps backwards as he can take steps forward. All that Philly showing right now. Not, not, <laughs> All that Philly showing hey, right listen, now. Listen, I, I, I say the same thing about Carson Wentz. I say the same thing. Carson Wentz didn't I, do what Dak did. I get that, but he's the number two pick overall, and we're going to talk about the number one pick later on. But he's still—it's the same—it's the same situation. If they don't do the things that's necessary to allow him to continue to to, to get better, he's still under that three-year window. Yes, he is, and I'm telling you, you saw the film just like I did. Dak left so much on—he left so much on the field last year, even with the year he had that he can't help but improve. He's going don't, to be a better player. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that go. he's not going to improve. I'm just saying. Go. Let's wait and see. Go. We've seen multiple national anthem protests around the league. So far, including from Marshawn Lynch, Malcolm Jenkins, and Michael Bennett. Even still, Bennett's brother Martellus says many players are afraid to speak out. Telling the Washington Post, quote, they fear for their jobs. They fear for their well-being. A lot of guys feel like they can be the next because a lot of guys feel like Colin Kaepernick was a better player than maybe me, and he's done more in the league than they have. All right, Cowherd, is fear of backlash stopping more NFL players from speaking out on social issues? Well, I think generally that's why people don't bring politics to work is a concern or a fear of what bosses or superiors might think. Yeah, I mean, I think backlash is the natural fear from... The number one fear in the world is not a plane crashing. It's not dying. It's public speaking. How you will be judged by others. So people will literally rather die in a plane crash than talk in front of eight people. So we we worry about how we're viewed and how we're judged. And players are like, okay, there's a pipeline called college football. I'm probably worth less than a quarter point in Vegas. I better be a great player if if that owner and GM... And I think that's a very human instinct to worry about what people think of you. I love your point about people's fear of public speaking because most people have enough self-awareness and they're not as delusional as multimillionaire athletes who've been catered to and pampered their whole life. And so you know what most people fear? Talking about stuff they don't know what the hell they're talking about. And do I sound foolish up here? That's what people are worried about. And so I think Martellus Bennett actually has this backwards. The real fear is taking the other side. 
of this issue. The real fear from NFL players is, man, if I were to open up my mouth and say, you know what, these guys doing this national anthem protest, that's really stupid. We should be doing something else to promote change rather than making the national anthem this divisive, polarizing event. There's a better way to promote change than through a national anthem protest. People have a fear of saying that because of the social media backlash and because people in the real media will chastise and criticize them. That's where the fear of backlash is. People throwing a hand up, throwing a fist up, taking a knee, that's so easy and trite. It's just a gesture that really does nothing. I'm gonna stick to the question, yes. They are afraid because when they look at a Colin Kaepernick and see that he doesn't have a job, they equate that with the fact that he spoke out and did something that the NFL didn't like, and they're slapping him down and All telling him. And that? And, listen, a lot of guys feel that way. You don't think some guys feel like this guy did something stupid that was anti-business and would like to open up their well, absolutely. mouth and say that? Absolutely, they can't there, say that. there's people on there's people on all sides well, of the fence. Where are those people? Because there, I haven't found what they keep talking about. There's no player, white players supporting the the protesters. I haven't heard one player, black or white, current player, cause, open their mouth and say, you know what he did is stupid. It's well, bad business and he deserves to be out of the league. Because you're not, not gonna... What, and there's be, some people to believe that. Of course it is. There's just, there's people that believe what Cap believes. Yeah. And, and they keep their mouth shut too. There's people on the other side that aren't gonna say anything for fear of the backlash in a reverse way. Yeah. Okay? Because if he's, if he's standing up for social injustice, and they come against that, now you got to deal with other people that say, well, why are you so against there being justice for all people? So, of course, there are people that believe that. But I think that there are guys that honestly believe that, you know what, if I step up, if I step out, if I stand up, that there's going to be some type of reprisal as a result well, of that. It. Player well, reps for years, Kevin Mawai and other player reps were like, man, when you're, when you're getting to the end of your career and you're a cut or no cut guy, Player reps historically don't come back that year. Well, guys, look at it this way. If, if you were to put cameras around a team, around their huddles, around the locker room and on the field in different groups, you're going to have the same few guys speaking up yeah. all the time. Mm -hmm. Everybody doesn't want to talk, be it fear of public speaking, be it that's not, not their personality. If you ask the players do they have an opinion on it, yes. Do I think that guys aren't speak all that a majority of the guys aren't speaking out because they're worried about the fear of losing their job? I don't think that's the case. I just think most of the guys don't talk and they don't speak up. Period. They have an opinion on it. Now, do I think they're hearing what's being said when whenever a GM or a head coach gets up and says, "You know what? The guys has the freedom to the guys can do what they want to do, but I wouldn't do it." But you have the freedom. They hear what's being said, okay? Eric, but these are just the facts. So let's just deal with the data. There have been about 20 guys make some sort of gesture, kneeling, but there are about 20, fist in the but air. But there are about 20 guys that, that, that those no, are no. the speakers on their team. I, I would agree. Hold on. I just want to deal with the facts, though. 20 guys have fist up, kneeled. One guy isn't in the NFL. 19 others are. So if someone was just analyzing the data, they'd say, well, hell, there's like a... 3% chance I'll get run out of the league if I speak my mind and support Kaepernick. I just want someone to show me there's not one player in the NFL that has come out on record and said, you know what, what Kaepernick did is stupid. Not, not one. And not gonna and again, do it. You can't tell me there aren't guys that believe they that. They believe it, but they're not so gonna do it. So that's where the fear is. There, there could be, but there could be a possibility, but that if someone is looking beyond the anthem aspect of it and saying that him standing up, if it's, this is strictly about social justice, that there may not be a player that think that that is wrong. You may not be able to find one player that think that that's wrong to do. You haven't lived in the same America. I can find yes, people. Yes, I have. I can find people that hate Santa Claus in America. You can find a person for every position. But you may not necessarily position. find them in one of those locker rooms. Then, there are a whole lot of other people in the country. And I understand I that that's a microcosm uh, of the, of the I, world, but, I, I, but you may actually have people that, that, that let's are be saying honest, that. Though. There's, in, if you extend everybody's family, there's a cop virtually in everybody's family. Yeah. I mean, when you wear cops or pigs, yes. that, that offends some slave players. catchers. Called them slave catchers. There's some black players that got black cops in their family. But you start I got some of my best so friends, black. <laughs> Black fraternity, married to black women, the whole nine yards, and they black cops, and they ain't slave catchers, they're not pigs, there's some people. But not one NFL player can come out and say, you know, him wearing them socks was stupid. 
All right, welcome back to the show. Eric Davis is back, and we're joined now by the founder of The Big Lead, Jason McIntyre. Let's move to Mayweather McGregor, which after a year of hype is now less than a week away. Most people still don't give McGregor much of a chance, despite recent efforts to hype up his abilities as a boxer. But that hasn't stopped Kevin Ioli of Yahoo from speculating about a victory for Conor McGregor. Quote, a McGregor win over a man considered one of the greatest boxers of all time would do nothing but improve the stature of the UFC. It would almost be a license for it to print money. All right, Cowherd, which sport has more to gain from winning this fight, UFC or boxing? Boxing, because boxing's optics are that it's dead. The sport's dead. And this weekend, their fighter is going to completely dominate the young, niche upstart UFC. And then after that fight in about three weeks, you got the Triple G fight. And that's sold out. And that's going to be spectacular. And the UFC star will have been embarrassed. So sports is all about momentum. Boxing wins Saturday. Next fight three weeks later is fantastic. And McGregor shrinks his profile diminished after he's dominated. Uh, I understand the whole optics, and I, we love to talk optics. But there is this thing called reality. <laughs> They're getting into a boxing ring. It's boxing that's printing the money right now. And this fight's gonna allegedly set pay-per-view records. It's gonna put more money in F Floyd's pocket, more money in McGregor's pocket. I don't see how the UFC couldn't be the biggest winner if somehow McGregor looks respectable, if somehow McGregor pulls off the upset. Oh, boy. This is a huge... And again, that's not going to happen. <laughs> Whoa. But it's a huge win for UFC just to even be in this arena. Yeah, Colin, where is the win for boxing here? If McGregor pulls the upset, which okay, I think guys, is going to happen. But You listen, think it's going to happen? I don't see why not. But if he pulls the upset, where's the win for boxing? Well, again... How, boxing, you might as well read it. It's last rights. It's over. Only two guys have been able to draw on pay-per-view in boxing ever. Mike Tyson and Floyd Mayweather. That's it. Without those two, where does boxing go? Where's the upside? Remember, Mayweather retired two years ago. Okay, he's not coming back after this fight. It's over for boxing if May McGregor wins. But you guys are putting all your hopes on if McGregor wins. No, yeah. no, I'm not. Yeah, well, he's not. I'm, <laughs> I, I'm, Again, I'm sitting here if, stunned. If that if happened... Now, see, now, just, so you don't think McGregor has a chance, right? No. Which no. means that boxing has more to gain by winning this, by this fight. What happens when you watch Mayweather get in and just sun this guy, it shows that the skills, that those UFC fans will see that, wait a minute, as much as you guys think that this is the sport and this is the comeback sport, the skill level in this other sport is so superior that maybe you want to yes. start paying attention to it. Yes. So you have an opportunity, because as you just said, boxing is dead because you don't have those stars. Mm. But you look at the UFC guys, you don't have to have an American as the, the champ for them to follow it. In the States, with boxing, you, could, you sort of had to have that heavyweight American that those UFC fans may start to go and follow other guys, the Triple Gs of the world, because the skill level is so much higher. Yeah. I, think that, I think you can get a generation of fans to start watching boxing again. This, when the stage is this big, you know, this is, this is an evil can evil jump. This is Nick Wallenda doing a tightrope. This is, the stage is big. When's the last time somebody was humiliated on a grand stage, and their profile didn't shrink. When was the last time Floyd Mayweather humiliated anybody? He doesn't knock anyone out, Colin. He has boring fights. If McGregor goes the distance here, 12 rounds, hangs with him, that's a win for McGregor, even if he loses. A guy who's never fought professionally well, as a boxer. What do you think's going to happen? Just, just fight analysis. It's going to be a shutout. That's I don't what think, I think. I don't know if McGregor will ever even land a punch. <laughs> that's and what I, I think. Say that wow. In all sincerity. So, uh, so that's a win right. for boxing. But again, again, that's all speculation. <laughs> yeah, but your speculation's better than his. Exactly. I'm talking about a guy who retired two years ago. He hasn't fought in two but, but years. But most people agree with Whitlock. Again, yeah. yeah I mean, McGregor, you got to understand something when you start. Boxing's dead. Some of us have lived 50 years, and they've been saying boxing's dead forever. forever. Uh, yeah. Forever. Right. And it's never dead. Because when two people fight, if you in a crowd say, oh, there's a fight, people stop what they're doing and go <laughs> running out to <laughs> exactly. see. If you, oh, there's a football game. People don't stop. But if two kids, me and Colin can get in a fight out in this hallway, and people would stop what they're but, doing. Oh, there's oh, a fight. By the way, right. I'm there for that. For <laughs> Look sure. at all the movies in our lifetime. <laughs> There's boxing trilogies. Yes. They're, they're not making UFC movies. They're making boxing movies. It's got. It's like baseball. We keep saying it's dead. Yeah. I go to Dodger games. There's 50,000 yeah. people on a Tuesday there. It's not dead. 
it's not dead, and I don't see any. Yeah, way. if McGregor wins the fight, you know what happens? He's going to go to boxing. He can make more money. Other it's UFC certain. guys are going to make more, are, are going to go to boxing. That's so regardless, it's boxing. better for right. boxing. When a UFC guy go. pulls the upset. Welcome back, Eric Davis, Jason McIntyre here. Let's move to the National Basketball Association. We're reportedly, reportedly Magic Johnson and the Lakers are under investigation for tampering after the Pacers filed a complaint regarding their former star, Paul George. Lakers have denied any wrongdoing, but there's speculation the complaint stems from this conversation Magic had on Jimmy Kimmel back in April. What constitutes tampering? Like, if you're on vacation and you run into Paul George, are you not allowed to speak to him? No, we're going to say hi because we know each other. I you see. just can't say, hey, I want you to come to the Lakers, even though I'm going to be wink winking like... <laughs> <laughs> You know what that means, right? <laughs> All right, Whitlock. Should the NBA punish Magic over that? <laughs> uh, yeah, they actually Come should. On. Yes. Yeah, look, look, it's tampering, man. I'm, I, you know I'm a Pacer fan, right? And Paul George has left the Pacers. Look, man, yeah, that's tampering. He that should have done right it. That right there is tampering. Yes, he's Ow. making it clear that he wants Paul George to, well, to come to the Lakers. Well, of course he does. Okay, yeah, he didn't have to do anything. Paul George has made it clear he wants to play for the Lakers. He's made that clear since he was 19. Okay. Magic could have easily just avoided the entire controversy and not put himself in that position. Why is Conor McGregor, who's never fought, getting a prize fight this weekend? He's a celebrity. Why did Donald Trump get to go on Saturday Night Live, even though you're not supposed to give candidates extra? Because he's a celebrity. The NBA and is going to have to figure this out. Magic's not your typical president. And that he's going to go on talk shows and do be loquacious and do jokes. Like, you can't... Celebrities... If, if today, Kim Kardashian says on Twitter, I'm going to 3rd and Vine to a shoe store, you'd have to hire security. Celebrity is real. It changes elections. We close airports, streets, hotels. What he did there is what a superstar icon in America does. They go on talk shows. The Rock's going to run for president in about... Could be a year, the way things are going. He's going to run for president. <laughs> and when he runs for president, there'll be rules that'll be changed. He won't door-to-door -door campaign. This is just magic being magic. He signed up to be the president of the Lakers. That was his choice. Different set of rules. That's a high-profile position, though. Why can't he wink on national television? <laughs> you know what it is? This is the NBA clamping down on super teams. Remember the big discussion last year at the end of the season? Super teams are bad for the league. The playoffs stink. The ratings are down. And now Magic's trying to create a super team because the snowball effect is we get Paul George, then we're getting LeBron. Back to back, they're getting a super team. And I think the league, privately, these small market, mid market teams are not happy that all the stars want to gravitate to the good market. That part and I the believe. Well, the teams. league has done nothing yet. The Pacers have complained. Herb Simon. The league has Herb done Simon. Uh, uh, Peter Vesey was on my show today. It's like yeah. Herb Simon called up and said, hey, come on. Right. We're, we're in the Midwest. You can't be doing Miami, San Francisco, LA. I think he's right. Houston. I think no, the small markets are concerned. No, should, I understand that, but that's not the league. That's an owner and a team. Yeah, should they should they view this as tampering? Yes. Yes. Should Magic had avoided this? Yes. Are they going to punish them? No. Mm. Because it's bad for the league. It, it really is. Because you can't if you mm. if you look at everything that you look at, it's the Lakers not being good is bad for the league. Well, wait, what about and, Chris and you Paul? Look at, yeah. You yeah. look at the Chris Paul situation. You, you look at everything that's and, and that's what they've already slapped them, okay? So you look at everything that happened, and you look at how bad they are. That the Chris Paul situation is a perfect example. Look at what has happened to this franchise. You, if you start taking draft picks, if you don't allow them to sign George, then you don't get you don't get yeah. LeBron. The Lakers are in, you, they don't have draft picks to work things out, work out deals to try to compete against those guys. They're going to be bad for another five years. That's why they're not going to slap it, him on the wrist. You literally, Jason. Let's say there was something I didn't know. I would agree with you in, in the premise that tampering's bad. But if that Jimmy Kimmel appearance, that's it? Boy, that's... Well, first of all, let's say you're Herb Simon. Yeah. And, and you're sitting there saying, you know what? My team president can't even get on Jimmy Kimmel's show. Well, that's... that's an uh, it's an unfair advantage. Again, they're, they're trying to put a competitive lead together. And so as the president of the Lakers, he signed up for that job. There's some rules he needs to follow. We don't have to blow up all the rules just because a celebrity shows up. 
I mean, we have that going on right now in this country. You know what? I agree, with you. What? I agree with you that he still has to follow the rules, but I also think that they are going to talk to him because of his celebrity and say, you can't do yeah. things like this. I don't think they're going to come across his yeah, head. They'll on probably it. tack on a fine, you know, pay $250,000. We're stripping you of a second round draft pick yes. or something, not a first. But, that, that, but I mean, just it, to. We saw the tampering. That apparently is the tampering. My gut instinct is that's it. It was a joke. What more does it have to be? All right, to LeVar Ball, who got a surprising endorsement this weekend with Jay-Z offering his support for the outspoken father and wannabe shoe magnet. <laughs> the rapper and mogul said he bought two, three pairs of Zoe 2s and added, quote, LeVar could move culture. And his son has a big enough name and a big enough brand that they can do it. All right, Cal Hurt. Does this give LeVar and Big Baller brand more credibility? Well, yeah. I mean, let's say you were a, sh a, a fledgling shoe company. How much would you pay for Jay-Z to buy your shoes and say that? That would be a seven- to eight-figure endorsement. It means something. What do they call them, influencers? Yeah. I mean, he's a cultural influencer. It means something. No, it, it does add a tiny, tiny bit of credibility. What would make me believe Jay-Z more is if he said, you know what, I'm going to get behind Big Baller Brand, and I'm going to go into business with LeVar Ball. That would add some authenticity to it. Jay-Z letting $1,500 fall out of his pocket <laughs> to get three pairs of shoes. I don't know if he can invest. He's got his agency with representing some players in the league, right, I believe. So I don't know that he could invest. I will say this, guys. I've come full circle on LeVar Ball. I got to say, as a small business owner myself, as an underdog, you know, he's challenging Adidas and Nike and Under Armour, and I think Jay-Z sees that. And remember, his lyrics in a rap song, Coward, I know you know this rap song, where he said, I'm not a businessman, I'm a businessman. LeVar Ball is a business at this point, okay? He's challenging define the big the dogs. Define the challenge, though. I mean, what, define, well, I put mean, some meat on those You don't dogs. think Adidas and Nike and Under Armour are just the least bit scared that LeVar no, Ball, no, some no, random dude no, out of Chino no. Hills, California, no, they're not, they're has started a, a company no, with three no. kids? No, I've actually talked to some shoe executives. No, they're, they're, no, not, they're not. They're not, not right now because... Um, so, to answer the question, as far as adding credibility, Jay-Z, you know, stamping your product, right. you're, as you said, from an endorsement standpoint, it doesn't hurt at all. But I'm with you, Wit. Credibil credibility would have been added if he said, I'm going to write a check. I'm going to write a check, I'm going to get behind you, because I bought three pairs of shoes and I'm waiting for you to deliver them. How about I give you the money for manufacturing? How about I get this jumping off right now and get things going? That would have then stamped the deal for me right there. I agree with what he's doing, that he's, he's testing the norm, okay? You and I agree on that. He's testing the norm, he's doing it. But I don't think Nike and uh, uh, well, Under Armour and Adidas, they're not they're shaking in their top. boots because no, he hadn't started not, selling not it yet. Until of, he sells, they're, they're not worried. selling shoes. Shoes is a very unique market. Like, it's, I'm, I'm, I don't connect much with it. I, I buy Asics. Um, so, but shoes... You're that one. Uh, yes, but <laughs> shoes would have a lot of um, it factor. And who wears them? That's why some of these brands just give free shoes to stars. You know, all of a sudden, I step on stage at a concert, and I'm wearing a shoe, and it goes viral. That shoe sells. Yeah. There is something to be said about... When I see Jay-Z actually wearing these shoes... What if you did? I, I, and let me go a step further. When I see Lonzo regularly wearing these shoes, because it, it's like we've forgotten, he was the first guy to step right. out of the shoes because they seemingly weren't working for him. So it's nice that Jay-Z is saying he bought three pair of them. I'd like to see him in concert wearing them and actually using them. I'd like to see Lonzo actually using them on a basketball court. He ran to all other kinds of shoe brands very quickly. So... Again, this is it's nice that Jay Z has verbally endorsed, but again, until he cuts a check. Do you remember I'm not in the Summer impressed. League where Lonzo did wear the other brands of sneakers and it was a huge deal again on the internet and social media? Don't think those companies didn't notice that everybody's writing about and the young people who are purchasing sneakers and apparel are all talking about what Lonzo Ball is wearing. I, I would agree with that aspect, but I also just know some executives are laughing at Lamar Ball and they don't want to be associated.